The following program is brought to you in living color. I walked through the damp, foggy streets, my mind swirling. So much content, so many podcasts. How do I find the best? Then it hit me, like a big blue neon sign flashing through the mist. Blueberry. All I had to do was drop the E's and go to Blueberry.com. Blueberry, the digital media interface for consumers, creators, and advertisers. You're the only one left right now. Uh, That's good. That's good. It's good. I'm, I think... Now, be honest with me. Did you ever think, almost a year ago, it was June, in this building, you were going down that escalator, that you would be the presumptive Republican presidential nominee? But, and I'm saying, what am I doing? I mean, I'm hearing these people... Did you, know, you really talk. think you could win? Him? No. Uh, not very loyal. So I, I, I'm not sure I sat there and just said, I'm going to win. But subconsciously, I must have thought that I was going to win, and I felt I was going to win. Now, in recent weeks, in months, in fact, you've suggested the system is rigged, the yeah, Republican 100%. system is rigged. 100 percent. You still believe that? Oh, sure, 100 percent. But you got the nomination? You're just telling me this for the first time. I said, I'm not going to do it. I don't need publicity. I mean, I gave up The Apprentice for two more years. Yeah, I don't mind. The only way I got it, I went for the knockout. You know, when I saw all these folks going out and getting delegates and they're, they're, you know, whining and dining people and bringing them to hotels and paying for hotel rooms, they're not the rules. It's a dishonest system. I'm very proud of the fact that after all of these many, many decades of the delegate system... You don't really believe that... Kennedy. No, I don't. Ted Cruz's father seems like a nice guy. I don't know him, but seems like a nice guy. He made horrible statements about me. You know, pray, praying for bad things to happen to me. This week, she said this about you. The leading Republican is the man who led the insidious birther movement to discredit the president's citizenship. No, I wasn't. Do you know who started it? Do you know who questioned his birth certificate, one of the first? Ted Cruz's father. I joined somewhat after I heard that statement. I did. Here's a person under investigation by the FBI and frankly, maybe she won't even be able to run. Now, I think she probably will, because I think the Democrats will work it so that nothing happens to her, even though everything happened to other people that did far less. Let, let, let me just clarify, the whole birther thing, where do you stand on that now? I don't talk about it anymore, because every time I talk about it, it becomes a story. So I don't want to waste my time talking about it anymore. But she's uh, going to raise this issue against you. I don't care. Doesn't, I'm going to raise it against her. All right, let's talk a little bit about another story uh, that's come out. And, and I know you, you hated this article in GQ about your wife, Melania. Julia Yaffe wrote it. Uh, she posted Melania was dishonest and accurate. Uh, a very tough piece. But since then, some of your supporters have viciously attacked this woman, Julia Yaffe, with anti-Semitic attacks death threats. These people get so angry. What's your message to these people when something like that happened? I don't have a message to the fans. A woman wrote a, a article that was inaccurate. She didn't need a story like this. Now to the many friends who wait for him, we present Just Plain Bill, the story of a man who might be living right next door to you. I am the danger. A guy opens his door and gets shot and you think that of me? No. I am the one who knocks. Big bad Bill is sweet, William Knight. That's right. Now, say my name. Just plain Bill. You're goddamn right. There he goes, into that drugstore. He's stepping on the scale. Weight, 237 pounds. Fortune, danger. Who is it? The Fat Man. Welcome to Breaking Fat. I'm your host, Bill Schmalfeld. Uh, if you were shocked to hear that Donald Trump is considering Sarah Palin as a potential shortlister uh, on his vice presidential vetting list, you're going to be shocked even further when I reveal some information that uh, pertains to one of the 11 names he released today that would be potential Supreme Court nominations. It turns out that 
there's been much said in uh, the Alabama blogosphere about one of the uh, 11 names on that list. And we'll talk more about that coming up. Other subjects for today. Trump's announcement that he would speak unconditionally to Kim Jong-un, knowing that he'd speak to the dictator of North Korea that is threatening us with nuclear weapons after being so bombastically opposed to the deal with Iran. Uh, Makes one shake his head a little bit, but we'll talk about that coming up. And uh, whatever else uh, we find on the radar that we feel you should know about. All that and more coming up on today's edition of Breaking Fat. He's wacky, he's zany. Wacky and zany. It's another wacky and zany show. Night of total terror. Night of the brain dead. The dead who live on living flesh. The dead whose haunted souls hunt the living. The living whose bodies are the only food for these ungodly creatures. in fear, an experience in shock more shattering than your strangest nightmare, night of the rain dead, a night with the dead who cannot die, a night of total terror. Night of the Brain Dead. Purloin Parody Productions presents Night of the Brain Dead, taking the public domain film of the Night of the Living Dead, stripping away the soundtrack, and adding our own. The zombies are now mindless supporters of Donald Trump, and a small group of humans struggle to hold on to their sanity as the world of logic and reality crashes down around them. Night of the Brain Dead, with new dialogue written and voiced by William M. Schmalfeld Sr., and music provided by Kevin McLeod from Incompetech.com. Night of the Brain Dead, available as a DVD or as streaming download for sale or rent at Amazon, iTunes, and wherever quality digital entertainment can be found. Night of the Brain Dead. Don't vote for Donald Trump until you see this movie. For more information, visit WMS-DB.com. Insightful political analysis from someone who really doesn't care. Welcome back to Breaking Fat. It's a Wednesday afternoon, May 18th, 2016. Donald Trump has released a list of 11 names that he would consider nominating to fill the seat of late Justice Antonin Scalia on the Supreme Court. Now that in itself is an unusual move since he is not the nominee yet, nor has he won the election, but one thinks he's doing this to underscore his appeal 
among conservatives. All of these judges that were named are fairly conservative. And one name jumps off the list for what I would call a most non-conservative reason. I don't know how closely folks follow Alabama politics, but one of the justices mentioned in this uh, roundup, I guess, is William H. Pryor. He's a judge of the U.S. Court of Appeals for the 11th Circuit. He served on that court since 2004. Uh, Judge Pryor became the Alabama Attorney General in 1997 when Jeff Sessions was elected to the U.S. Senate. Judge Pryor was then elected in his own right in 1998, re-elected in 2012. In 2013, Judge Pryor was confirmed to a term on the U.S. Sentencing Commission. He got his law degree from Tulane. He clerked for Judge John Minor Wisdom. (laughs) What a great name for a judge. John Minor Wisdom (laughs) of the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit. Now, none of that is particularly controversial. And I've put in an email request with some questions for my friend Roger Schuler in Alabama, the uh, notorious, if you will, liberal blogger who runs a blog called The Legal Schnauzer. And it's because of him that Judge Pryor, that name jumped right out at me. Now, I want to share this uh, not from Schnauzer's blog, not from... uh, Schuler's blog, I should say. But this is from a blog called The Billorico Project. This story was filed on September 20th, 2013, by John M. Becker. And I'll share with you the prominent points therein. He wrote, A reader tipped me off earlier this week to this juicy story out of Alabama, where a former state attorney general, current federal judge, is in hot water after a photograph emerged that some claim shows him posing fully nude. The judge is William H. Pryor, Jr., who uh, Becker characterizes as a staunch judicial conservative, outspoken homophobe, who was named to the federal bench by George W. Bush in a recess appointment in 2004 and confirmed by the Senate the following year. Pryor allegedly modeled for the naked picture sometime between 1980 and 1984 when he was a student at Northeast Louisiana University. Sources indicate that the photo likely appeared in print sometime during the 80s and found new life in 1997 when it was uploaded to a bulletin board on the gay porn website Bad Puppy. Judge Pryor has a wife and two children, and he has reportedly denied that's him in the photograph, but... uh, The previously mentioned Alabama blogger Roger Schuler claims that a prominent member of the Alabama Republican Party and a close associate of Judge Pryor positively identified him as the guy in the picture. Upon seeing the photo, he allegedly exclaimed, Holy cow, that's Bill Pryor. A computer printout from the online gallery in which the photo appeared shows a cropped version of the image with the name Bill Pryor next to it. It says there are 15 pictures in the gallery, but only one seems to have surfaced so far. Now, Becker raises the question, and I concur, if Pryor did indeed appear in a gay porn photo, it would be quite scandalous given the fact that he rose to prominence, if you will, 
in a large part by attacking LGBT rights. When George W. Bush nominated him to the federal bench, the national LGBT organizations came out swinging. Uh, HRC, I guess that's Hillary Rodden Clinton, noted at the time that Pryor's office filed a brief in Lawrence versus Texas arguing that sodomy, quote, is a chosen behavior unworthy of constitutional protection and likening homosexuality to incest, pedophilia, and necrophilia. Lambda Legal decried his, quote, extreme judicial views and then Task Force President Matt Foreman called Pryor an ideological tyrant of the highest order. Now, if these allegations are true, I think we can also call him uh, an ideological hypocrite of the highest order. Uh, is the naked, We'll post a photo on our blog of the judge wearing his black robe, and the judge wearing nothing, if that is in fact the judge, and allow you to make up your mind as to whether or not there are any resemblances. But you have to ask yourself, is the naked man staring into the camera with pursed lips the same Bill Pryor who would go on to become an anti-gay federal judge? Or are Pryor's enemies creating a fake scandal? Now, again, in my mind, this brings into question the vetting practices of Donald Trump, the presumptive nominee for President of the United States. And we already have heard that he's considering Sarah Palin on his short list of a vice president. I guess... Uh, he wants somebody on the ticket who will make him look smarter, I guess. Anyway, go to our website, wms-db.com, to see the side-by-side-by-side -side -side photos of the current William H. Pryor, Jr. A photograph of him uh, looks like back in law school, and then the nude photo in question and you tell us whether or not you think we got the same guy here. Sure looks that way to me. Now it's time for the next thing that's gonna happen. And here it is. Well, it was a long time coming, John, but I'm glad we were finally able to reach an agreement to end our dispute. As am I, Bill, as am I. Now, why don't we both sign this agreement and... And we'll be done with it. All right, here, let me just... All right, here, then I'll... Oh, and, uh, uh initial, the, uh, this part here, too, there's a, uh, there's a codicil on the, uh, on the back page. Codicil? I don't recall a codicil. Oh, it's nothing, nothing major. It's nothing that you won't agree to. Just go ahead and initial it. All right, I... okay. Well, that concludes the matter. Oh, except for one thing. And that would be... Mm, follow me uh, into this next room, if you don't mind. It's awful dark in here, isn't it? Well, don't worry, we'll turn on a light. That's a, 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 a glaring spotlight that's right in my eyes. Let's get that shirt off of you. Hey, wait a minute. Who's this guy wearing the hood? Oh, he's another facilitator, mediator, if you will. I thought we were done with... Hey! Oh, all right. I'll make sure those handcuffs uh, securing you to the pillory aren't uh, cutting off circulation to your uh, hands. <laughs> but what, uh, why are we doing this? It's all part of the council, Bill. You should have read the agreement but wait a minute, I... Ow! Why is he... Ow! This is... Ow! I don't see any... Ow! I think four is enough, don't you, Claude? All right, let me get 
spaghetti at the top off of this uh, mayonnaise jar here. What's that fluid in the jar? Oh, nothing for you to be overly concerned with. It's just about uh, 16 ounces of cat urine that I've been saving up for this occasion. Cat urine? What are you going to do? Oh, God, it burns. It burns. Wake up, you're having a dream. Oh, 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 I was having a dream, wasn't I? Oh, and it was the most delightful dream. The most delightful dream I've ever had. I th- Maybe if I get back to sleep, I can pick up where I left off. Yes, that's it. Bend him over. Now bring the goat over. <laughs> On jingles all the time Jingle Radio We're back with uh, Breaking Fat Bill Schmalfelt here And uh, a moment ago we were speaking about Judge William Pryor Jr. of Alabama, uh, who is one of the 11 names on the Donald Trump shortlist uh, to be considered as a replacement for Judge Antonin Scalia if Trump should somehow find himself in the White House. Uh, I mentioned that a blog called... uh, the Billerico Project uh, wrote about this issue, and the story was broken by my friend uh, Roger Schuler, who runs the Legal Schnauzer blog. And even though it was Roger who broke the story, the story did get a wide amount of uh, national coverage in, in the liberal blogosphere and elsewhere. Another friend of mine, Andrew Craig, who runs the Justice Integrity Program and wrote an incredible book called Presidential Puppetry that you can find online or at your favorite bookstore, goes into why this is an important story in a blog post published at about the same time as the others I've mentioned. He wrote, This photo controversy is newsworthy for several reasons. This matter is already in the news. Washington-based investigative reporter and author Wayne Madsen broke the story four years ago in the Wayne Madsen Report. Is there a closet door closed at the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals in Atlanta? And four years ago from then would have been uh, 2009. Madsen wrote that informed sources suggested that naked photos of Pryor were held by influential Republicans as an insurance policy of correct decision-making. Madsen illustrated his column with what appeared to be a copy of a page from the Bad Puppy site, uh, listing the name of a Bill Pryor, next to the photo that you can see at our website, wms-db.com. Schuler has published three columns about the topic on his blog, which is well known uh, in the southern law circles and nationally in legal circles. At least a half a dozen other blogs have repeated the allegations, and those include Above the Law, and the Liberal Land blog that I used to write for, uh, run by national broadcast personality Alan Combs. Pryor is a powerful figure. His court holds jurisdiction over federal cases in Florida, Georgia, and Alabama, and helps create national precedent affecting cases elsewhere around the nation. 
The importance is not simply in law, but across the entire range of public policy issues that come before the courts. Krieg uh, illustrated the variety of such disputes, including election integrity, job bias in a 2009 column, Alabama decisions illustrate abuse of judicial power. It described the plight of litigants who faced a biased judge. Pryor's long-ago confirmation battle remains relevant, Andrew wrote. President Obama has had continuing difficulty in obtaining Senate confirmation of judges even though his Democratic Party holds a Senate majority, as it did at that time. Uh, the prior confirmation by a Senate majority vote is a parallel situation. The allegations come at a time of evolving standards in the media and accusations regarding sex scandals. Substantial evidence exists that far more public officials are involved in sex scandals than the public knows. The process of reporting such events is so highly selective as to be inherently unfair. His research regarding Alabama indicates an unusually high number of top officials from both parties have been hiding scandals under a public image of family values. More reporting and discussing, not less, would appear to be the appropriate solution. And if you're a long-time reader of mine, you'll recall back, I believe it was in the summer of 2013, that Carl Rove forced me to take down an image I had for sale on Zazzle.com because it contained an image of conservative activist Ali Akbar that Rove claimed to be his intellectual property. That's how Schuler and I first became acquainted in discussing the ramifications of that. And within the next couple of days after we had discussed the story online, Greta Van Susteren on her Fox News program asked a question that apparently Rove thought was going to turn to that subject, and he got all flustered and a couple of days later found himself getting quote, married, unquote. Also, the public risks blackmail or other undue pressure on officials who may be compromised by hidden scandals. Reports have circulated for years in elite Alabama legal circles that Pryor was compromised by badpuppy.com photos held by well-connected Republicans with interests before the courts. Andrew claims to have received copies of several such photos purportedly of Pryor uh, back in 2011 and before from a reliable source. He says, For these reasons, my opinion that the photo is Pryor more likely than not, despite his denial, I believe the controversy is worth reporting. Even so, the possibility remains that the photo was not of Pryor and that various extenuating circumstances are possible. As is typical in the right-wing blogosphere, uh, the first thing they do when confronted with an uncomfortable fact is to blame the messenger. And that's exactly what happened this time. Uh, Roger Schuler started finding himself uh, the subject of state investigations. At one point, he was slammed up against his garage door and hauled to jail by police. Another time, police broke into his uh, residence, where he was living at the time, and broke his wife's arm right in front of him. So a discredited blogger does not get that kind of attention from the powers that be. So is that... William H. Pryor Jr. in that photo? If it is, what does it say about Donald Trump's vetting skills as the potential president of the United States and the people he would appoint 
to important, and in this case, a lifelong position on the Supreme Court. More coming up. Stick around. It must be true, because I heard it on the radio. It must be true, it must be true. The Obama. If you want to know who we are, we are running for president. A musical retooling of the Gilbert and Sullivan classic operetta set in the 2016 presidential election. We argue in each debate to help you decide our fate. You're wrong if you think we're great. You'll thrill at the story of the haggard old socialist trying to get the nomination over the presumptive favorite. A lonely socialist, my face is old and baggy, my hair is white and shaggy, but I'm a vibrant guy, I've been... But his plan seemed doomed to failure as President Obama himself has dispatched Vice President Biden to officially offer the endorsement to Hillary Clinton. Behold the outgoing Vice President... The kind of guy that you could have a beer with Not a whiff of haughty arrogance A guy that you could watch a game and cheer with Ascent, ascent To the outgoing vice president Ascent, ascent For his part, Vice President Biden realizes the importance of nominating the correct person who can beat any of the, at the time, three remaining GOP candidates. Three candidates were all disgusting, each one of us for power lusting, hoping to hell that you'll be trusting. Three from the GOP, three from the GOP. Biden is tempted to give his endorsement to the socialist candidate until... Oi! It's Hillary. She looks worse than I told you. No! Escaping now, my claws shall thus entrap you. All seems lost, but then President Obama arrives. A more beleaguered president never did in D.C. exist. Except maybe Lincoln, I'm certainly thinking that he would top the list. But tasked with winning the Civil War to keep the Union alive. He never envisioned the kind of division that we might not survive. He wisely leaves the decision to the former Secretary of State and the old socialist. If that is so, sink, Gary, now Gary is evident, Gary, our tastes are one. So let's go for more unity, take it, grab, come, put in, kick it until we want to take Gary, down, Gary, our unity, take it, grab, come, set, and kick it until we want. And you can be assured that everything works out in the end for Hillary and for the old socialist. Or does it? The Obama, a retelling of the Mikado for the 2016 presidential election. The music, originally by Sir Arthur Sullivan. New lyrics by William M. Schmalfeld Sr. All voices performed by Mr. Schmalfeld. You can get your copy of this CD performance through our website, www.wms-db.com, or wherever online digital products are sold. Get your copy of The Obama and you can join us in being right for once. And I am right, and you are right, and all is right to Lura He is right, and we are right, and all is right to Lura Lura And I am right, and you are right, and all is right. The Obama. Get your copy today. You give us 22 minutes, and we'll give you a piece of cheese.
And we're back with Breaking Fat. Bill Schmalfeld here. You can find me on Twitter at Purloined Parody, all one word, at Purloined Parody. Our Facebook fan page is facebook.com slash liberal talk radio. And our home website, www.wms-db.com. The show is broadcast not only on my website, wms-db.com. You can find it on Spreaker Web Radio. Just go to Spreaker and do a search under my last name. It's also available on SoundCloud and especially on Stitcher Smart Radio. And I think that's one of the cooler apps out there that you can get for yourself. It's absolutely free. You can stitch together your favorite shows into customized station playlist, save them for easy access, create a news playlist for your morning commute, comedy playlist for the weekend, browse and search over 40,000 different shows like this one, or select a preset station from Stitcher's editors like the top 20 comedy shows, top 20 news and politics shows, and a whole lot more. We're also available on uh, Google Music Play and iTunes as well. So, uh, so many different ways to get this program. I heard back from my friend Roger Schuler. He's the Alabama blogger journalist who broke the William H. Pryor buck nakey nude photo scandal back in uh, some, some years ago. And he's given me permission to share this email with you. He writes, I broke the prior porn story. I have no doubt it's him. I have multiple sources who have no doubt it's him. And I have little doubt the story was the number one reason I was kidnapped and thrown in jail. And Carol and I had our house stolen from us. I know the names of several individuals who have copies of similar pictures of Pryor that have not been made public yet, and I'm not aware of anyone ever dismissing the story. I doubt that Trump has done any vetting. After all, he hasn't been elected and probably won't be. This Pryor story, I suspect, comes from U.S. Senator Jeff Sessions whispering sweet nothings in Trump's ear, about Pryor. Trump mentioned Pryor uh, back in March after Super Tuesday, and I wrote a post about the skeletons in Pryor's closet. Might be time for a few more such posts. And uh, this was written on Wednesday, March 2nd, 2016. Donald Trump builds strange alliance with Alabama, quote, prostitute, close quote, Jeff Sessions, and Bill Pryor, the U.S. judge who avoids questions about his ties to 1990s gay porn. And you can find that for yourself by going to legalschnauzer.blogspot.com and just do a search for Bill Pryor and you'll find all sorts of material there. Okay, switching gears for just a moment. If you ever want to know what's the right way to think about something, go to redstate.com and whatever they're talking about on their front page, do the opposite, think the opposite. There is an article or a diary, if you will, from Leon H. Wolf on redstate.com, published yesterday, May 17th, that uh, (laughs) you you, you read these and you just can't believe your eyes are are making sense of it, but uh, he says uh, there's only one obvious choice for Donald Trump's running mate, former Alaska Governor Sarah Palin. In fact, if he nominates anyone else, the whole premise of his campaign will have been a lie. What is the premise of the campaign? That what America needs is a carnival barker 
bankrupted businessman and a half-term governor who couldn't think her way out of a paper bag? We need nimrods in the top two most important positions in the free world. Is that what Red State is saying? Or are they so enamored by the utter intellectual boobery of Ronald Reagan that they won't be happy until they have presidents that are even more ill-informed than he was? Well, Wolf writes... Either way, it's time to find out one way or the other. This contagion has been in danger of wiping out the GOP for years. And he's talking about the contagion of progressive or moderate thinking. It's time to concentrate it all in one place where it can either flourish beyond all expectations or be incinerated once and for all. The time for half measures has passed. It went by the wayside two weeks ago today. Trump should go whole hog or nothing. Sarah Palin for vice president. Does anybody have the website for that maple match thing where American citizens wanting to move to Canada can find uh, Canadian citizens to marry them and vouch for their citizenship? Because I'm giving that some thought if Trump should somehow win this election, especially if he drags the half-governor of Alaska up there with him. And now, Trump talking about Kim Jong-un. This is the same guy who ranted and raved about Barack Obama making a deal, uh, along with the rest of the free world, to rein in the Iranian nuclear program. But now... No conditions attached. Trump is saying, yeah, he'd be glad to try to talk some sense into Kim Jong-un. And believe it or not, it's not the dumbest thing Trump has ever done. Napoleon, Alexander the Great, Donald Trump, we're all cut from the same cloth. And that cloth is very, very large. It's not too big, is it? No. Why do New Yorkers have such big mouths? Go big or go home. Because they eat big pizza like the big New Yorker from Pizza Hut. We're talking 40% bigger. Soft, fresh dough with all your favorite toppings. Now from just $9.95. You've got to be losing money on this. <laughs> One, three, double, one, double, six. Pizza Hut! You know, you're really beautiful. And a woman that looks like that has to have her own special scent. Oh, thank you. Maybe, maybe you could tell me what you think of this scent. Hmm, I like that. This, this may be the best of all. Oh, you dirty boy, you. Oh, oh. Donald, I thought you were a gentleman. Hmm. You can't say I didn't try. Mayor Giuliani, he's given away over $2 billion in corporate wealth. When it comes to great stakes, I've just raised the stakes. The Sharper Image is one of my favorite stores with fantastic products of all kinds. That's why I'm thrilled they agree with me. Trump stakes are the world's greatest stakes, and I mean that in every sense of the word. And the Sharper Image is the only store where you can buy them. Trump steaks are by far the best tasting, most flavorful beef you've ever had, truly in a league of their own. Trump steaks are five-star gourmet, quality that belong in a very, very select category of restaurant, and are certified Angus Beef Prime. There's nothing better than that. Of all of the beef produced in America, less than 1% qualifies for that category. It's the best of the best. Until now, you could only enjoy steaks of this quality in one of my resort restaurants or America's finest steakhouses, but now that's changed. Today, through the Sharper Image, you can enjoy the world's greatest steaks in your own home, with family, friends, anytime. Trump steaks are aged to perfection to provide the ultimate in tenderness and flavor. If you like your steak, you'll absolutely love Trump steaks. Treat yourself to the very, very best life has to offer. And as a gift, 
Trump steaks are the best you can give. One bite and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And believe me, I understand steaks. It's my favorite food. And these are the best. Here to sing the theme from Green Acres, please welcome Donald Trump and Will and Grace's Karen Walker. Green Acres is the place to be. Farm living is the life for me. Land spreading out so far and wide. Keep Manhattan, just give me that countryside. Hey, anytime you come is fine. Late or early, you're still on time. Come on out, take my advice. Have a high, high time at a low, low price. Where? Freedom Land. Huh? Freedom Land. Where? Freedom Land. Where? Freedom Land. Oh, that's the place. Get a can of Dr. Lyons tooth powder today for a few cents at any drugstore. See what a surprise you get the first time you use it. We believe you'll never again return to ordinary, less effective ways of cleaning your teeth. We are sorry, oh so sorry, very sorry, we're sorry, we'll never do it again. Thanks for being with us on Breaking Fat today. I'm Bill Schmalfeld. We'll do this whenever we feel like it. You can find our podcast on our website, www.wms-db.com. We're on Stitcher. We're on Spreaker. We're on SoundCloud. We're on Google Music Play. We're on iTunes. We may even be under your bed. I don't know. You can tweet to us at Purloined Parody. That's one word. Purloined Parody. Our Facebook fan page is facebook.com slash liberal talk radio. Until next time, remember, when you look at the photographs of William Pryor, one of Trump's 11 picks, potentially, for the Supreme Court, remember, there's a reason why he's on the short list. We'll see you next time. Wow, I just took one of the biggest poops of my whole life. What are you ordering? This podcast is proud to be part of the Blueberry Network. That's blueberry with no ease dot com.